Drawing a street. Right, well, there are plenty of videos on the internet about this, so this one's just designed to start you guys off. Okay, so you're gonna need a ruler, a pencil, a sharp pencil, and some paper. And you're gonna draw your horizon line. So you're gonna think about where you want your horizon line. Is it gonna be then near the top of the page? In which case, things will all look rather large, like you're a worm looking up at things. Or is it gonna be near the bottom of the page? where it might look like you're more of a giant looking down on things. So I've chosen somewhere more or less in the middle. And don't forget the horizon line is the same as our eye level line. So quite easy to remember. And it's a parallel line that we line up all our other parallel lines with, all our other horizontal lines with. Okay, so the next thing is to draw in the vanishing point, which I do not want to be in the middle. I'm going to put mine slightly to the side. You can decide what you want to do, but I think it might produce a more interesting picture if you do yours on one of the sides. Not quite on the very edge either. So we're going to draw these lines outwards and they are going to form the basis of the tops and bottoms of your buildings or your road. You could even do a railway track if you really want. Um, and so I'm just really doing it without thinking too much about uh, what angle the lines are going at. Now I'm going to add in some pavement lines just so that you can see how they get closer and closer together the further away you get. Now I'm going to add in some verticals so that you can see that it will begin to look like there are some buildings on either side of me. I'm trying to make my buildings look interesting by giving them some detail. Don't worry, you don't need to do this yet, but you can see how the important thing is that every perspective or depth line, or what else do we call them, orthogonal lines, lines up to that original vanishing point, you see. And you've always got your rubber handy. Your rubber is important to stop you from being so confused with so many lines all over the place. And that's why you're not pressing too hard with your pencil yet either. Now you can see how windows are coming in here. So it's all these verticals, they've got some window sills there. And some windows are set back into the plane of the building, so that's what we've tried to do there. And you can see how they're constructed of vertical lines and orthogonal or depth lines that link up to the perspective point. Here I've gone over to the other side of the street and I'm starting off with some what will be tinsy looking buildings because they are so far away in the distance. Now buildings on a street of course aren't all the same height. And some of them are set back from others, some stick out more. So you might want to think about these sort of details when you're drawing. If you need help, you could always go and take a photograph of your street outside and see if you can have a look at that to see where the depth lines are and use that as your model, if you like. Another thing you might like to think about is how you're going to do writing in perspective. Well, say you've got a shop sign like this I'm doing here. You've just got to remember that the letters that are furthest away from you on the picture, from furthest away from the picture plane, are going to be smaller than the ones closer. So I haven't done this very carefully here, but you do get a sense that the P of shop is a bit bigger than the S. Of course, another thing is you might not want to have a point at the end where you sort of see into infinity in the distance. There might be actually a building there. Who says there has to be just nothing in the distance? So you could rub out that vanishing point and actually, well, I've chosen to put a church here. 
uh, with some columns in the front. Um, but that's something you could do, but all subsequent lines still have to line up to that uh, vanishing point where you had the dot originally. Right, so we're speeding up again now. Um, I'm going to add a few more buildings. That tower is slightly wrong because I've forgotten that it's a cone shape at the top, but I'll correct that in a minute. And uh, trees are always useful. You can cover up parts of buildings that you think you've got wrong with them. Trees are very easy to draw. You just need to find the right marks to draw them that gives a sense of a tree. And you also need to think about where your light is coming from, don't you? So if it's coming from right out there where I've put that uh, arrow, you can see uh, that the areas that are dark. Now, one of the things you might like to do is go over your drawing in a pen and then rub out the pencil behind. You don't have to do that. So, have fun doing your own drawing. You can make it up as you go along. It does take practice. Don't get panicky. Just try your best. <laughs> Now, one thing I wanted to show you was a uh, work of a previous student. Um, I just wanted to show you that he started off well, but there's something wrong about this picture, and I don't know if you can quite see there. What do you think it is? Now, let's get our ruler out and see if he really followed the rules of perspective. So, he put his uh, horizon line very high up. That's fine if that's what you want to do. Uh, it kind of looks more like he's a bird flying over the town. And he's done everything below his horizon line. Okay, that's fine. Um, he's got his vanishing point rather in the middle. I think you can make it more interesting by putting it here or here or there, but just not directly in the middle. Um, but that's fine. Now, has he actually followed the rules of perspective? No, he hasn't quite got it. Here's his vanishing point. Now, the roofs of this, this line's fine, because that's the roofs lining up. He's even done the windows here, the top of the windows, fine. But he's kind of lost it a bit here. Can you see? He has completely got those uh, window sills wrong. So they should be getting a lot, lot smaller than he's got them towards um, the distance in the horizon line. And he hasn't done these ones right either. So just make sure it's very simple. You just lined them up. Has he got these ones? Oh, he almost got those, but he just kind of lost it. He got. Got this one all right, yeah, got that one. So he obviously, I can tell he sort of started off well and then when it got to the details, he just kind of forgot to do it. He did manage to get a nice bit of height here on a roof, that's fine, but this line here of the roof was, he made it vertical when it should have actually lined up to the horizon, line, the vanishing point there, sorry, because um, it's going away from him. So, and that one's fine, this one's good, these ones are good, but again, he's kind of lost it around here. That looks very, very skewed. If he's tried really hard to do a bay window, you know, he's getting there. Um, even this is good here, but then this line of the door should be parallel to the, line, to the bottom of the door, shouldn't it? So it should be more like that. And um, again, the window is still slightly wrong here. So just watch out for uh, that in your own drawings, okay? And uh, good luck. <laughs>